Let's go over the Corona V-Ray to GLB script. Oh yeah! And what it is and why you need it. So basically I've just taken a sample of three models from Evermotion. Um, and these are the renders on the right. And this is going straight to GLB on the left here. So I've just taken the model, run the script, and here's our result. Cool. At the end of the video, I'll show you how to install the script. But for now, let's just run it. It'll be this hinge icon. And this is what the UI looks like. If you use the V-Ray to GLB script I made previously, this is basically just a rebuilt version of that to support Corona as well. Here we go again. Take into consideration that with Corona, you're going to need to use the physical materials. If, however, you are just using um, the legacy materials, then just convert, open the converter, and enable the Corona conversion and just convert them over to physical materials before you run the script. Otherwise, it's not going to work on legacy materials. First of all, when you open it up, yours is going to look like this. So set your directory how you want. I'm just going to export to the desktop and I'm going to hide the warning pop-ups. However, it'll still print them to the listener. So you can get some feedback. If it doesn't bother you, you don't need to worry about it, then just you can hide the warning pop-ups, but it's just there for you to know what you're missing and what can make your materials better. All that means is that by default, GLTF should have a bitmap for all these basics here, except the mission. And if you don't have any of these five, then you're going to be told about it. Okay, let's just go through the, what these settings actually do. So, for example, this armchair here, if we just isolate that, take a look at the material. You'll notice that, let's say, for example, the diffuse. If we look at the textures here for the armchair, we'll see the armchair has this prefix and then normal glossiness, diffuse. And you'll notice here, it also has an occlusion, but it's not in the material anywhere. So if we have that enabled, find missing bitmaps, and we went convert, it's going to look in the directory. If it can find that occlusion or AO, and then it's going to populate that slot for you. If it also finds meldingness, it's going to put that in for you. If it's got an alpha or an opacity map, it's going to also look for that and put that in here for you. Um, while convenient, it can also cause issues, which we'll go into later. That's why it's off by default, but it's there if you need it. Convert glass to transmission. Now that's off by default too. And the reason being is it can also cause some edge cases. Um, so as an example, let's just say that we had a material that uses the standard glass in V-Ray, the, the preset, or something similar to those values. Um, then what it's going to do is if we go convert glass to transmission and convert that object, you'll notice it's going to switch transmission on and give us this nice glass looking material. Just like what we have here on the table. However, that also can cause some edge cases because not everyone sets up the materials the same. Some people might, you know, change it from the default settings um, or do some extreme changes to it. So, for example, they may change the refraction color to be really dark or something like this. Um, then, yeah. Convert textures to GLB compliant. What this does is the in the GLB material or GLTF material, um, it doesn't accept things like EXR or TIF or whatever. So it's just going to, if it spots that, um, it's just going to convert them to JPEG. So if you don't like that, switch it off. Now, convert glossiness textures. So this is quite slow, um, but if you're, if you have a model that's working in the glossiness BRDF mode instead of roughness, it's going to recognize that and it's going to grab the texture, make a copy of it, and then invert it. So you can see here our basket glossiness then becomes inverted and becomes our roughness texture. And then it will put that in there for you. So yeah, it's quite slow, um, 
But if you're working already in the roughness uh, workflow, then you can just switch that off and it will run like 10 times faster. So yeah, note that when that's enabled and you hit convert, that button's going to stay blue for quite some time. So you might want to go grab a coffee until that is complete. Rename the GLTF maps. A lot of the time, people don't name their materials. It might be just like map one, map two, map three, whatever they've decided not to name. Um, in this case, they've done a good job of prefixing everything, so you might just leave it. But if you wanted to, um, with this material here, for example, when I had renamed GLTF maps on, it's just going to take this name here and put that in here. So instead of map one, it's base color, roughness, etc. Remove the GLB file. Now, by default, when you export GLB files, from 3D Studio Max, it always outputs this little log file. Um, that bothered me. So if you remove log file and you export again, it's going to then go ahead and delete that log file. Which is handy when you're doing like, say like five objects or 10 objects, you're gonna get like log, 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 log. So that's what that does. Remove subdivision modifiers, obviously any mesh smooth, turbo smooth, whatever. Um, it's going to take that off. So if we open up the original here, you're going to notice that this is very dense and that's not going to play well when it comes to GLB files. We want them as optimized as possible. So having that enabled, when we convert that object here, it's just going to remove the subdivision modifiers. And as you can see, even though it's faceting a little bit, it's going to be much better for real time and overall the quality doesn't look so bad anyway although you may get intersections which you're going to have to manually fix up to you if you want to use that or not collapse multi-sub materials don't use this pretty much that's just my workflow i mean you can give it a shot but what it's going to do is just go through any multi-sub and it's going to pick the material in here with the largest texture count and it's going to replace the entire material. So yeah, warning, probably don't use that. And hide warning pop-ups. If I had that by default and I convert this one, I'm going to get this little pop-up telling you here, check the max listener for details. You just right click on here, open the listener and it's going to tell you this thing is missing. Now on the seclusion, this plant here. So. We can see by selecting that, it's definitely missing the metalness and the occlusion. If that doesn't, if you don't want to be bothered by that, just enable that and you can just keep working. It'll keep logging them here anyway, but you're not going to get that little pop up window. Convert materials, obviously, whatever things you have selected, it's going to convert and it'll either be your selected object or everything. So if you're troubleshooting, um, probably just leave it on until you're done, and then you can just export everything all at one go. Last few settings here, and that is export as individuals. So if I have that selected and I just have, say, those items selected, and I export them, you're going to see that each item is now exported as a single object. So we have our book. We have our lamp, oh, the candle, because so I've got those two objects separate. We have another book, the table, whatever, you get the point. So this here, if we select combined, it's going to combine all those objects as one piece. So give it a name. My name is Bob. If you don't, it's just going to be called unnamed. And lo and behold, we have our combined object. And obviously, scene, it will just export everything in the scene and with whatever name you give it. That's all that. And once you've got your settings that you're most comfortable with, you can just save the settings as default. And every time you open the script, it's going to remember. And then if later on you want, you can just restore the default setting.
So let's talk about the bitmap nodes and color nodes. Works the same as it does in V-Ray as it does in Corona. So let's just do this one in Corona for an example. We should use a Corona physical material. And we're going to put a Corona color. This would be the same in V-Ray, V-Ray color. And we had, say, this pink. Then when we convert, it's going to try and find that pink color and put it into our base color. However, let's say that we didn't have any bitmap or any node color, and we just have the swatch color as this. Then when we convert, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to put that color there. Works the same for mission, sheen color, volume. We don't use specular or IOR in this script, so don't worry about those. Same goes with values. So if we were to go back to our physical, and we had a roughness of 0.2, a refraction of 0.5, and we convert, our roughness is going to be 0.2, our transmission is going to be 0.5. Same thing. Unless you're using bitmaps. Bitmaps will automatically set your GLB or GLTF material to 1 and use the bitmap to drive the values. Also be aware that if you have a bitmap inside a color correct, then it's just going to take the bitmap and put it on top of the color correct. So whatever color corrections you've done, if you want to keep them, then you would just render your bitmap out and replace it so that you keep your color correction. Take note that when you're in Corona, you're not actually going to be able to find the GLTF material. Don't know why, but any other render engine will. So if you have V-Ray or Scanline, you can find the GLTF material here if you're trying to create one from scratch. Okay, let's go over some edge cases. Now, where these might trip you up, because like I was saying before, everyone worked differently and uses different values, which is kind of why the whole PBR thing came about, sort of reduce that and drive everything using bitmaps. So in a perfect world, basically, you would have a base color, a roughness texture, a normal texture, and optionally, you can have clear code, sheen, transmission. These are just driven from either a thin absorption for your transmission. If you were using translucency instead, it would drive this value for your transmission volume. If you were using a volumetric scattering, then it would use your scatter color for your volume. Sheen, same thing. If you're using a sheen, it's going to take your sheen values, your roughness or your bitmaps, your clear coats, etc. Let's take a look at some edge cases. For example, on this one here, you'll notice that this table uses an opacity map. So because they put that into the refraction, that wouldn't be a big deal, but because it's labeled opacity in our GLTF, it's going to put that into the alpha channel if we ask it to find missing bitmaps. As an example, if I was to now convert this with find missing bitmaps enabled, because it has the suffix opacity or alpha, it's actually going to put that in here, which is not what we want, because now it's going to become see-through. And if I was to now export that, so if we then put our GLB in here, that's all messed up. So that's a case where fine missing bitmaps isn't going to help us. And now, glass of transmission. There's another edge case where glass the transmission may not work so it's good with like the default or close to default values for the glass presets in corona and v-ray however you'll notice in this case let's just export those this is just a straight raw conversion using the default settings however you'll notice that there's no transmission enabled and it wouldn't work anyway because these two objects are connected to one another so as an example our newly exported object. 
the glass is black. So there's an easy fix of that. You would just create a standard GLTF material. We can then detach this, apply our new material to that glass, and we can just enable transmission. It's the default glass basically for GLTF. Now, when we export that again, it's going to come out how we expect it. Oh, yeah. As I mentioned, it's not a perfect world. Some things are just not modeled the way you expect. So debug as you go and just be aware of how these things are working in the background. Okay, now let's look at the another example. Is metalness isn't quite widely used, in, especially in legacy stuff. It's only really being used more now. If we were to take a look at our mirror material, it's not using a metalness, which it probably should, right? Because it's a mirror. It's completely reflective. As you can see, the reflections in the mirror here. So what we could do is it's just the same thing. We just grab the geometry here, detach that, put a new GLTF material on it, and just crank the metalness to one and apply it to our object, obviously. So when we do that, and export, Check this out. you'll notice we have a nice reflective mirror. Also take note of anything that has an alpha. By default, it's just going to give it a mask with a cutoff value of 0.5, which is pretty much set to default. Sometimes it's going to be useful to use a blend instead. You're just going to have to decide that for yourself. But that should work pretty well as default for most things. As you can see with our tree, that default settings works pretty well. Last but not least, if you want to go ahead and download this, the link will be in the description, but basically it's going to take you to my GitHub page. And it'll bring you to the Corona V-Ray GLB script. You just download that. Then drag it in. And then you'll find it in the right click customize toolbars category Bella and it'll be the automate Corona V-Ray to GLB with a little hinge icon. You can then drag that to your toolbar and there you go. Have fun.